Welcome to Game of Roses. This is Pace Case. This is Bachelor Clues, and it's Friday, which means this is This Week in Bachelor Nation. We're going to be talking about all the news, all the parasocial plays. We got screams from the pit. We got gains to speak about. Obviously, the DNC was this week. In some parts of this country, our beloved game was preempted by Joe Biden's hour-long speech. Uh, that may or Some may not parts, have affected our the Our watch party. <laughs> yeah, our watch party. I literally gave a scream a at the watch party. I was so pissed. I was going to yeah. throw my shoe at the screen. No, but uh, we can't thank everybody enough who did come out to our watch party at 33 Taps in Silver Lake to join us for hometowns, the first round of playoffs. Everybody stuck through it. Nobody left. We all Most of the people. Erica did through. leave. She, oh, she right. <laughs> Yeah, she was a doctor. There were a couple. Obviously, you know, we she should give her. save a life. But... Um, uh, thanks to everybody who came out. We should also mention that the watch parties will continue next week for Fantasy Suites. I will be there at 33 Taps in Silver Lake for that Monday program. No one will be there for the Tuesday Men Tell All watch along. You'll have to watch that by yourself. No one. <laughs> yeah, no one's coming for that. <laughs> no one officially. You can go there and, and... Just the Monday night episode, to be clear, yes. is the only official Gore watch right. party next week. There will be no... Uh, mental and then for the finale Anya, our social media and marketing director is going to be there holding it down for us but lizzie and i will not be there because we no. it's a live show <laughs> we're going to have to watch it at our homes on monday night in order to record the show that comes out tuesday in silence so please show up yeah. to 33 taps just know that there will be no lizzie there will be no me there but Anya will be there uh, doing trivia and games and watching with everybody in the pit. And it should be a good time nonetheless. And we are in talks to figure out a situation watch party for Golden Bachelorette. Stay tuned. Yeah. I also stay tuned on my Instagram. I'll post where I'm going to watch Fantasy Suites. I haven't figured it out yet. Oh, you're going to go somewhere I'm going, in Minnesota? I'm going to go to a, Ooh. if I can find a bar that's playing and I'm going to go. Oh, that's in awesome. In Minneapolis. I can't wait. You got to be taking some. Pics I'll post of that, those assassination coordinates <laughs> when I get them. <laughs> Please, no one assassinate Lizzie. Please don't do that. I will take pics. We should also mention that our love level shot glasses are back in stock. So if you ordered one when they were out of stock, you will be getting it. And if you want to order one now, you'll also be getting it. We should also mention that if you want to order one, you can get it for ten percent off by using a code G O R two zero two four when you check out in our store at gameofroses.co. You get 10% off anything you buy using that code through the end of gen season. So it's almost over. Anything? Shot anything. glasses? Shot glasses. Your gen tran commemorative t-shirt? Bucket I got hats, everybody everything. at the watch party who was there to sign my shirt. Oh, yeah, that was cool. Myself included. Yeah, I haven't looked at what exactly people wrote. I think they signed it. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bunch of squiggles. <laughs> um, but that's it. That wraps up our business. Now let's move on, Pace Case, if you wouldn't mind, to the first luscious portion of our program. This is Game, game of, of Roses. Roses. State, State of the game. game. The State of the Game currently is an interesting one. We are coming out of Gen Trans season. We have one week left of it, basically. Um, or I guess two weeks, right? There will be... Fantasy Suites well, and Mental All this three next Three episodes. Yeah. One and a half weeks. Three episodes, yeah. We're about the next one and a half weeks. And then we're going to have one week off, and we're directly into Golden. So what we wanted to talk about uh, for this state of the game is basically the scheduling of our beloved game for the rest of this year and what it might look like next year with the return of Paradise and what really is the off season in the Bachelor franchise at this point. So this year... Or is there one? Or is there? I mean, we'll get to it. Next year, I don't think there's going to be. But this year, we did get a little bit of an off season, about five weeks there in between um, Grazia Days Season 28 and Gen Trans Season 21. That will probably likely exist next year as well. But then I think we go into this period, like we're seeing right now, Gen Trans Season is going to essentially go straight into... Joan Vasso's Golden Bachelorette season. There might be one week off there, and then we're... The re that, that is the reason for our state of the game, is Clues yeah. and I just looked at the schedule, and we were we have two episodes of 
Golden Bachelorette players to break down. And we were like, oh, we don't actually have two weeks between yeah. seasons. There is maybe one week. Exactly. We're going to fit it all in, though, rest assured. Unless there's not the finale on Labor Day, but we believe it will still be on Labor Day. Yeah, I assume it will be. And then we move after Joan Vastos' season, which is going to wrap up. It's going to air through September, October, maybe early November, mid-November. And then we're going to have whatever that is until January, about a month and a half there as well for an off season. And then we will see what happens with Bachelor season 29. Traditionally, the, the Bachelor started the first Monday of January, yeah. but that wasn't true for Grazia Day. So TBD yeah. on how Grazia's long that off season will be. Day. Let me look at this real quick. I, I want to say it was, it was like 22nd. 26 or something. Yeah, in the 20s. Um, which, you know, once we have New Year's, we don't have any other holidays. They should do it the first yeah. Monday. So we have something to start our New Year off right. It was January right 22nd. So mm, that was the nice. last week in January. So maybe we'll get an extra month there. We don't know. But the, the pace of all this stuff, as we now are gearing back up to in 2025, to have a paradise again. So you're going to be looking at Grant Ellis's Bachelor 29, January, February, some of March. You might, again, get that five- to six-week period where they're shooting whoever that Bachelorette's going to be for season 22. Her season will then air. It will then run directly into Golden Bachelor season two, I believe, which will have some Bachelor coming out of Joan Vassos' season. Then you will have... Ooh. Uh, Paradise, maybe after that or maybe concurrently. I could see a version Ugh. of that because you don't really want to be airing. Please, no, concurrently. Please. What else could they the do? The powers that be, please do not air it concurrently. Well, do you think that Just they'll jam throw... them all closer. <laughs> closer well, I think together. that's what they're going to do. But I don't think it'll be the same thing they did with the first season of Golden Bachelor had Paradise Season 9 immediately after it on the same night. So Golden Bachelor Season 1 was only an hour-long episode every time. Then they had Paradise Season 9 for a two-hour episode immediately after it. That season hemorrhaged over half of the viewers that Golden Bachelor was bringing in. It was an unmitigated mm -hmm. disaster. And it has led to, I believe, in part at least, the decision to not have Paradise this year. They have to retool it, think about what oh, did we do wrong. absolutely led to that decision. Right. And now I, I think it would be a mistake to do that again, especially yeah. if Golden Bachelor is going to be two hours now, mm -hmm. which the you rumor don't is want a be. four hour bachelor night. Correct. People will quit. So I believe what Not they're us, going to but do. Yeah, yeah, we won't. We'll <laughs> never quit. <laughs> Please. I literally hours. blocked it out of my mind. I was like, wait, they were on the same night. What did we do? I was like, did we do two recaps? No, we did one. We did one because Golden Bachelor recap. was so short. It was only an hour of material. But I do think, as you're saying, that's going to be extended to two hours of material. And then you're also going to have a two-hour paradise. I don't think they'll air them back-to-back. -back, but I also don't see them airing paradise during winter months. Like, I don't think they're going to put right. paradise on during November, December. So I think what is most likely... Ski season. Happen, yeah, it is. Summer ski. house, winter house. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they do paradise in, like, a cold climate type thing. But I don't think they're going to do that either. I think what is most likely so. is you're going to see golden bachelor airing on a monday and paradise airing on a tuesday or a wednesday of that same week that is what i think Honestly, is most that's likely. fine with me that's a lot i know we were just uh, trying to figure out which schedules are okay with us and that one is okay <laughs> yeah so if you're just listening not the ABC, same night can you please schedule around us okay thank you very much abc you owe me after what you did with the preemption on the DNC oh. when I flew across the country to watch the Hometowns episode at the bar with all my friends. Yeah. And it was an hour and 20 minutes into the program as scheduled before we got to start the Hometowns episode. And we lost Erica during that time. That was tough for me personally. I mean, she's still with us. <laughs> You know, kind of figuratively speaking, we didn't lose her. She just we, left. She the left premises. the watch yeah. party. <laughs> she she went home. <laughs> I hope she's excited. I mean, okay. We didn't lose her. Erica's We're still focusing on her. Um, she's fine. But I would also say that the scheduling of all this stuff, as we at Game of Roses are expanding our coverage of different shows, and more uh, reality shows are being produced, kind of constantly, especially Third Wave, Traders, World's Toughest Test, House of Villains, The Goat, et cetera, et cetera. 
we're starting to see this thing where there really is no off season. Like while we're covering Gen Trans season, I'm also watching all of Love is Blind, uh, UK, all of Perfect Match, and now I'm going to start in on Love Island USA season six. And all of these shows are, with the exception of um, Too Hot to Handle. Sorry, I'm covering that one too. <laughs> that one didn't do as well. But Love is oh Blind, my God. <laughs> Love is Blind UK is gigantic. Traders is mm-hmm. gigantic. Love Island USA season six gigantic. So all of these. Okay, Love Island season six definitely gigantic. What is going on with the Love Is Blind UK gains? I know that's not exactly under the category of scheduling, yeah, but they're very bad so far. If you're following along on Patreon good. with me, I kind of break down everybody's Instagrams with every episode that I do. And right now, no one is over 200k. The closest one to it is Freddie, who is the um, the guy who works out twice funeral a day. And he's a funeral director. Yeah, just a funeral director that looks like a model. He has about 180K as of the recording of this, so maybe he'll break 200 soon, like over the course of the weekend as people are getting the the final episodes delivered to them. Mm -hmm. But everybody else is sub-50 with one or two exceptions, sub-50K. I don't get it. I think that... I'm shocked. I am a little bit Because what's Leah Katab at? 3.5 million Instagram followers from Love Island USA. And now let me ask you this. Does anybody from any Mm -hmm. Love Island franchise show have more than that? That you're aware of. I would say there's one couple that like had maybe had one of the first babies. Okay. That's probably in the three million range. They got those baby numbers. Yeah, the baby numbers. Um Moira's gotta have at least two million. Okay. She's the one who's hosting mm-hmm. um after Sun for the UK. Yeah. But three point five million at least in term, I just kind of Googled around a little bit. That was the biggest number I could find from any Love Island show. And it's a Love Island USA show. And if you look again at right. like um, Love is Blind UK numbers versus really any of the US versions of it, there are people in every US season who have way more than 180K. And so you have to kind of. Where was at 3.8? Oh, Let's go. Okay. Queen nice. shit. Nice. Oh, so we got one. So proud of her. It. She's one of the greats. Yeah. Ekin Sue, what's she at? No, oh, I wait, Ekin Sue, no, wasn't she at like five all. or something? Am I crazy? Maybe I didn't do a good no, job. I have of to see this. them all. Four million, yeah. Ekin Sue. Okay, so two there's queens. Some big, big players coming out of the UK Damn. then, too. Um, but I do think overall the US versions of all these shows are establishing themselves as the most popular ones in terms of like engagement. At least in terms of Love is Blind, that's true. Traders. I don't know if anybody on Traders is getting big engagement, but that Traders Season 2 U.S. show was the biggest Traders season of any seasons anywhere in the world, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all this, though, yeah. is to say that... I mean, Love Island USA finally got big enough for you to watch it, and I'm so happy for that. <laughs> yeah, I was power bullied into it. Um, and now I'm going to have to rewatch 50 episodes of Love Island USA to watch them in the corner. There's I only 30 something. How am I going to do it? It's only 30 something. I'm not doing the after okay. suns. <laughs> People told me I no, didn't have to. Don't. I've never so watched. Well. I've never watched those. But all these other shows factor into the scheduling of this as well. And we really are in a spot, I think now, which we have long predicted, where there is enough reality TV that is of a high enough caliber and of a similar type. I would say, you know, Love Island, Bachelor, mm-hmm. Love is Blind, Too Hot to Handle, Perfect Match. These are all in the same kind of category of dating, dating sports. And there, yeah, there are enough of these that you can basically have 24 hour, 365 day coverage of just that, let alone throwing in things like Traders, Big Brother, Survivor, Housewives, Housewives all yeah. these other giant franchises. And so I think we really now are at a point where you could see a 24 hour reality TV show coverage network, which is kind of what we're trying to put together here. Um, <laughs> it's kind of what you're doing on Patreon. <laughs> I'm just trying to. I'm like, I can't even keep, keep up, up watching you know? <laughs> your corners, let alone creating that content. It's yeah, very impressive. I'm, I'm probably making about six to seven hours of content a day. No biggie. <laughs> you're a machine. It has to be done. Just talk to Dave Neal. But that is our, our state of the game. The schedule of Bachelor and more broadly, all of these reality shows that we're covering is just getting bigger and thicker <laughs> by the day. Uh, I, I don't and know the what... scheduling influences each other. Like, Absolutely. One of the reasons UK 
Love is Blind numbers might not be as big is because it's coming so close to the heels of the Love Island yeah. USA season six uh, explosion. And Love Island USA season six is like, that's an endeavor. To watch that, you might need a little bit of a break from that type of a thing uh-huh. after it. I, I completely yeah. get that. I don't, but I right. get it. Yeah. But you, it's <laughs> I've watched every to episode like, I've ever made. <laughs> this is how traditional sports um, the easy sports, we'll call them baseball, football, basketball, hockey. It's how the they, easy sports, yeah. Well, easier than the bachelor. CTE sports. <laughs> the CTE easy sports. Yeah. Those sports kind of bleed into each other as well. Their seasons overlap a little bit, and you have someone like ESPN covers it all anyway. But mm. that's kind of where we're at, I feel like, with all of this stuff. And I don't know what the the kind of saturation point is for it. Because it's not like right. we are living in... The limit does not exist. Right. The, because it used to be a limit of time. Every network had 24 hours it could program, and that's it. But now we've got streaming. That is irrelevant, completely irrelevant. It's just pump out as much as you can constantly. And so I don't know where this ends, but I think we are right now coming into the sweet spot of just... it's All of it is so good, and there's so much of it that we're going to do our best to try and cover it all as things are happening and coming out and everything. But yeah, this season, was I feel so lucky Bachelor. by the way that we are existing during this era. Yeah. Like me too. Good Lord. I was watching gladiator. Mm-hmm. They're bored to tears. They're so bored. What's gladiator, but the movie, the Russell Crowe, the Russell Crowe. <laughs> yeah. What? I watched it last night. What does that have to do with this? <laughs> Well, I was just saying, like, if I lived in that era, oh, I see. All you would be interested in is the gladiators. You're like, that's that's, that's all your only you show. can watch, yeah. and it's live. It's terrible. It's that and daily trying to survive your, yourself, escaping death at every turn, basically. Yeah, horrible. Yeah, it's not a very fun life. Lots, lots of death in that movie. I had blocked it all out. Yeah. That is, it's kind of messed up what they do to his. I won't say. <laughs> that movie came out no spoilers right after i had one of the worst breakups of my life with my girlfriend my college era girlfriend mm. and i remember just being super sad and my sister and i went to go see that movie and i cried during gladiator <laughs> because it- i mean i would cry <laughs> if i was seeing it for the first time i think because it's disturbing <laughs> no but i was crying because of his relationship with his I- wife and how much he missed her <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I haven't thought about that in a minute. Oh my god! Oh no! Ooh, look, yeah. emotional clues coming out yeah. in this state of the game. I All love it. All it took was a Russell Cl- Crowe Gladiator movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> by the way, clues and I before this started, we yeah. were. Uh, he was saying that we need like the opposite of Love Is Blind, where you can only see the people but you can't hear them. And there is speaking of all all the content that you could think of exists. There was a show I watched on Discovery. I want to say it was called Animal Kingdom Mm. or what was it called? Shoot. If you just look up Discovery TV show Animal Noises, you will find it. And the people are only allowed to make animal noises and grunts on this dating show. I might do that in a quarter after I get done with Love Island season six. Um, Anyways. It's very, it's worth at least an episode. Yeah. All right, I'll check it out on your recommendation. But that is our state of the game. Thank you for joining us for that. Now let's move on to that portion of our program where we talk about all the movements across all the various numbers that mean anything to our beloved game. This is... This Week in Games. All right, first up, we're going to talk about Gen Tran's ratings for this past Monday. Now again, in some areas, this program was preempted by the DNC. That can affect ratings, obviously. The cursed areas. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we were in one of them. So this Monday, Gentran pulled in a 0.32, which is down about 11% from last week's 0.36. And she pulled in 2.314 million viewers, down about 9.75% from 2.564 million viewers of the prior week. Where this kind of ranks overall in the season is it is the second worst rated episode after episode four. But that one hmm. was because of the Olympics. Gotcha. So Olympics, then DNC. Yeah. Her season's getting kind but of But this is also the hometown's events. episode, you know? Yeah, I know. If we move on to look at how she fared across the rest of the network landscape, 
Gentran tied for first yeah, place. Yeah, she got to beat the CW, right? She did beat the CW. But she tied with yes. the NBC, a new episode of American Ninja Warrior, which also got a point three two, and slightly edged her out with 2.35 million viewers to her 2.31. Then we had CBS hmm. coming in a... Uh, I would say distant second place to these two first place finishers with a rerun of NCIS doing a point two three. Then you had a new episode of Name That Tune on Fox getting a point one nine. A I'll say it again, a point one nine. And then of course the CW bringing up the 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 back here as they always do with All American Homecoming a new episode getting a point zero five. Point one nine mm. for one of the major four networks is. Um, that somebody's answering for that and i wouldn't want to be that person that's brutal yikes it's a brutal number. name that tune you know you think it's a classic <laughs> yeah people will love uh, yeah people loved it 65 years ago i don't get it i don't <laughs> yeah. get it people it's basically tiktok yeah <laughs> and now for those crown games as of today thursday august 22nd Jen Tran, you know, it's tough reading these after the Love Island numbers. Jen Tran gained 3K on Instagram this week, bringing her to 269K total. On TikTok, she gained 4K, bringing her to 134.6K on TikTok. Go follow Jen Tran, everyone. God, where does this wind up for her? 269K, and you've got... I'm going to really, guess 500. Yeah, two episodes left. Um we don't know what kind of fireworks await us in the finale or in, in the uh, fantasy suites. Maybe the men tell all she'll see a small bump, but usually that episode doesn't do much mm. for anybody. I just don't know. Putting on 3K for hometowns is not... I don't know that we've seen something like this in recent times. Thanks, anyway. Joe Biden. Yeah, it was Biden's fault. Blame it on him. <laughs> Let's move on to the top. Now for the top Instagram chart. Oh, wait. First, the top five Instagram gains... Coming in at fifth place, the real hero, Marcus Schoberg, gained 2.9K on Instagram. And then coming in in third place for his, uh, or sorry, fourth place for his swan song exit on Hometowns was Jeremy Simon with 2.993K. Stu Leonard's didn't didn't do it. (laughs) Devin Strader (laughs) is in third with... 4k instagram followers he put on this week for that the run and everything else and head bandage master jonathan johnson has a 4.6k gain this week in second place and the top instagram gain goes to our next bachelor grant ellis put on 7.1k this week that's respectable yeah that's actually pretty Mm -hmm. respectable in a week where he's not in the show he's not really doing anything other than making social media And he he topped the chart. He's making some good social media. Absolutely. Now for the top five in the Instagram chart. Number five. He's been out of the game a minute, but Sam McKinney's in fifth with 36.1K on Instagram. This is astounding to me. I'm just looking at this whole chart. Grant Ellis is in fourth place with 37.6K, your incoming bachelor. Third place, floater Austin Ott with 42.1K. Second place unsuccessful <laughs> crash attempter Matthew Rossi in second place with 59.3k not even in the 100k club there is only one man who is our first place finisher so far is Sam Najad the non-kissing bandit has 191k on Instagram I mean what is this none of these guys are even in the game Grant Ellis is your incoming bachelor, but he's no longer in Gen Trans season. None of these guys are. Matthew Rossi was arguably never in it. What is happening here? I don't get this. I, I don't know how to People explain People just this. don't care. Like, I know Tyler Cameron is kind of a, a singular entity. We may never see the likes of him again in our beloved game. But even that mm-hmm. season, you saw Pilot Pete walking out of there with multiple hundreds of thousands. Tyler Cameron obviously certainly did. Even Jed Wyatt, I think, cracked a couple hundred K that season. And that wasn't that long ago, mm-hmm. four years. A lot's happened <laughs> in those four years. <laughs> that is true. That is very true. A lot has happened. Now for the top TikTok gains. 
Number five, old Aaron Herb gained 100. <laughs> oh, wait, no, he's in fourth. Number five, Sam Nadal gained 100. Wait. TikTok followers. Sam Nadal is fifth here with 100? They're out of order. Oh, I see. They're order. out of order. I got it. Yeah. Then fourth place is old Aaron Herb with 115 new followers. Third place, Sam McKinney gained 300 new TikTok followers. <laughs> And Matthew Rossi's in second place with 700 new followers. Still going. Is this Austin Ott number and correct? S- okay. No, he can't have gained this. Okay, so Austin Ott's update here. His official TikTok has been found. We were previously reporting on the numbers from his backup account. Ah. Going forward, all his numbers will be from his official TikTok account. So I'm not sure about his gain. Yes, that's that his total real. amount. Wow. So <laughs> technically he has gained the most this week as we have switched to his real account. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's at 104.6K on TikTok. Good for him. I, I mean, good for him. Yeah. I didn't see that coming. And now for the top five TikTok chart total, we got Spencer Conley in fifth place, 12.3K. Fourth place... The wordsmith, Sam McKinney, 15.7K on TikTok. Third place, Matthew Rossi. He's in every one of these charts, 60K. <laughs> Second place, Austin Ott with 104.6K. <laughs> and of course, Sam Najat is at the top of the chart with 281.1K. It's just the, the weirdest. The untouchable Sam Najat. For real. It's just the weirdest social media season that I think we've seen. It's so bizarre. None of these guys are even It is in so the game. weird. It suggests, first of all, that you and I are the only people watching this show. And second, it suggests like 3.5 million people are following Leah Katab. Yeah. I don't know what she started with. I'm guessing it's not more than 10K. Mm-hmm. It's still possible to get these numbers. You just have to be... God, is it? Because I mean, popular if, enough. If you're looking at the raw viewership of the show, it's getting 2.31 million viewers. If you have mm-hmm. 100% of them following you, you're still only two thirds of the way to Aliyah Kateb. Right. So I don't know. I don't know if it is possible to hit a number like that coming out of Bachelor. And but it is. You know, it is because I will say this: the Bachelor is simply a stage. It is a a chance to be on national television. Mm-hmm. If you yourself are electric enough. If you have enough of that thing that makes a reality star a reality star, more people will watch the show. And, you know, for what it's worth, I think the the kind of modern era of Bachelor players, they get boxed into how the producers want to do the show, and it doesn't allow them to, like, step out and even have a performance like Leah Kateb. It's not possible to do I mean, the closest I can think is Maria Georges, and she is at 6.07K. Right. So it is possible to still get the numbers. Jen season doesn't have the ratings of Joey Grazia this season, but yeah, yeah. we'll see. I don't know. There's the still season. time. There's still time. And what look, is going to happen in the end? I'll just say this a thing we've never seen on the bachelor. Before? <laughs> yeah. Who knows what that might be? They're going to give everybody a, another free cruise. It's the second time we've ever given a free cruise. It's the first time we've given a free cruise for the second time. It's the first time her family is at the proposal. Something like that. It'll be something like that. But I do think, just based on what I'm seeing in terms of interest, DM-wise, from players that want to go into grant season, it is, I would Mm -hmm. say, more frenzied than it was for Grazia Day. For what that's worth. Take it to mean what you will. To me, it means... That's worth a lot. It is. I I I feel like it's... Obviously, it's a small sample size, but... It's an indicator. Yeah, because it means every person they're going to cast on this show wants to win that show bad. And that is always a a recipe for a great season, in my opinion. Mm. And, you know, the female players tend to be way better at this than the men, especially in terms of getting the Instagram gains. So there's still hope. And now let's move on to that portion of our program in which we... Discuss all of those luscious tids that are fit to print. This is... (music) 
Bachelor Nation News. Up first in Bachelor Nation News, the Pruitt child is just stating the Bachelor Season 24 runner-up and personal virginity card fantasy sweet ultimatum pioneer announced on August 18th that she and her billionaire husband Grant Trout are expecting their first child. How many people sent this to you? I mean, every every person, I think, on the internet sent it to me. <laughs> it was just, I, I don't know how many DMs I got that I'm just like, shit, it's another, it's her pregnancy announcement, it's her pregnancy I was announcement, it's so her pregnancy excited announcement. For you. <laughs> um... This announcement was made via Instagram and Facebook, and it featured a maternity photo shoot complete with hand-in-hand field dancing and sonogram images, along with the caption, we're pregnant. Baby Trout, we are so ready for you and can't wait to meet you. We, com- this will feature in Parasocial Place. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> the comment section was alight with well wishes from fellow Bachelor franchise superstars, including one half of Funk and Sluss, the mother of Slucy and Protocol, and the greatest night one player in history, Hannah Sluss, who wrote, congrats, beautiful. The airport group date cheating queen and preseason <laughs> Weber meter Kelly Flanagan chimed in with a heartfelt, congratulations, mama. I'm so excited for both of you. The recipient of a finished vial orgasm, Raven Gates, wrote, eee, congrats to you both. I'm so happy for you. Uh, teary eye emoji, heart emoji, heart We took different approaches. Emoji. That's great. <laughs> One half of the greatest <laughs> dynamic duo in Bachelor Nation history. Becca Tilly added, I'm so happy for y'all. Congratulations. Double heart emoji. I'm and so happy for you. <laughs> the only player in Bachelor Nation history to have Instagram stats celebrated on screen. Natasha Parker said, triple teary eyed emoji congrats best mama loading dot 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 quadruple heart emoji that's most of any of the yep. the comments written here congrats to Pruitt and Trout on this next step in the family building phase of what is no doubt their ultimate plan to control the world and may God have mercy on all of us <laughs> as we await the birth of the first Pruitt Trout progeny <laughs> I done. mean, <laughs> there is no bigger story this week. It is. Uh, I'm obsessed with. There's some facts about it that mm-hmm. we will get to in the parasocial plays that uh, dive a little deeper. Yeah. Into something. A little teaser. A little teaser <laughs> for right. the next next section. <laughs> well, congrats to the Pruitt Trouts. Up next to Bachelor Nation News, Pruitt's billion dollar baby wasn't the only incoming Bachelor Nation fetus to make a splash this week over the weekend. <laughs> Two other Bachelor Nation superstars. That should read three other Bachelor Nation superstars announced their gestational statuses. Bachelor season 20 crown and McDonald scarfer Ben Higgins <laughs> and his civilian wife Jess Clark also shared on social media that they are expecting their first baby together. Alongside a video compilation of their relationship so far that ended with their sonogram video, the spiritual shepherd of baby sea turtles wrote, the next chapter of our love story, baby girl coming in February, heart emoji. The video has raked in over a million views and lured several Bachelor Nation luminaries into leaving comments. The self-proclaimed Lord of Paradise, (laughs) Wells Adams, insisted on being granted Higgins' familial status by writing, I'm going to be the best uncle. (laughs) Teary-eyed emoji. Bachelorette season 16 replacement crown and one-time official Bachelor Nation podcast host and... One time co host of The Bachelorette, Tasha Adams added OMG, G, 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 five exclamation points at Jess Clark. Your bump is going to be so cute. <laughs> so happy for you both. Teary eyed emoji. And Golden Bachelor villain Kathy Swartz said, Oh my goodness, congrats. I would love to be one of your babysitters. Two hearts emoji. Jenna Cooper also took to Instagram over the weekend to join the I would fetus- love Kathy to babysit my child. Set it up. Can think of no better babysitter. Set it up. What about Susan? Susan Knowles. Okay, I can think of one other good babysitter. Dark Lord coming. That'd be fun. 
Jenna Cooper also took to Instagram over the weekend to join the fetus news cycle, sharing that she's expecting baby number two with her civilian soulmate, Carl Hudson. Alongside photos of the couple and their already existing daughter, decked out in a big cis shirt, The Bachelor season 22 eighth place finisher wrote, surprise, baby head emoji, baby Hudson coming February 2025, rainbow emoji, heart emoji. We are all feeling so blessed and excited. Presley is very ready to take on her big sister role. And last but not least, Wiener, Arkansas's own Tia China Pot Booth. <laughs> Never forget. And her <laughs> civilian husband, Taylor Mock, fired up their Instagram app to share a short video of the already son, 19 month old Tatum, walking towards them in a park with the caption, Big Brother Tatum, all caps. Thus revealing they are expecting another offspring to be arriving in the near future. I love your beautiful mind. <laughs> Congrats go out to these non fruit <laughs> trout fetuses and the parents that sired them. I'm just trying to turn some phrases today. You know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> the non fruit trout fetuses. I like, yeah, good luck. My favorite one was the already son. Um, <laughs> already son is great. We should use that. Yeah. Um, from now on yeah if they have ch children prior to the one that they're announcing they have an already son or daughter up next mm. in bachelor nation news uh greg grippo has resurfaced after his split or from- i just heard this term for the first time mm. it's one of the prince's book title the spare oh interesting if you're not the first son that's because of primogenitor yeah interesting huh mm-hmm. all right we can use that too if you want up next in bachelor nation news. no i like already son okay up next to Bachelor Nation News, the already son Greg Grippo has resurfaced after his split from Bachelor season 24 third, third place finisher and excuse you what coiner Victoria Fuller to reveal that he might soon be feeling the stinging sands of paradise twixt his thick toes. Does he have thick toes? I don't know. I just thought it was funny. Oh my God. He's probably got regular well, toes. Ten- I don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> Speculation. While attending the famously average golf tournament hosted by Ben and Ashley's almost famous podcast in Livermore, California, the Bachelorette season 17 villain said, I'm like as single as I can be right now. And when he was asked by Us Weekly if he might consider a return to the Bachelor franchise's I should say torture, um, sorry. <laughs> spin-off. What is this? Torture, torture. spin-off? Yeah. Oh, my God. I was like, Tortoise? Yeah, I misspelled that Bachelor franchise's torture spinoff when it returns to the ABC lineup next year. He replied, I mean, we'll see, comma, we'll see, comma, I mean, dot, 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 never say never. Although we have given the advice to only include players from the most recent seasons of the main games in the next season of Paradise, throwing some Grippo into the mix might not be such a bad idea. Great idea. People are obsessed with him. I agree. I mean, some people hate him, but... A lot of people are obsessed with him. I agree. I think he'd be a great want. addition. And, and it's paradise is where you can bring people that people hate. Look at Chad Johnson. Up next, Bachelor Nation News. Experimental strategy if you want to pair up with him. Tattoo chow on your hand. Be like, look, we're matching. Ah, interesting. I don't know if they still have those. You think they got them removed? I don't know. What do you do? I just keep it. It's a funny story. I don't know. I'd keep it. Up next... In Bachelor Nation News, Rachel Recchi and Blake getting Mullins. getting coaching. Yeah, let me give you, ta- now I'm doing tattoo coaching. Um, up next in Bachelor <laughs> Nation News, Rachel Recchi and Blake Moines are not dating. At least that's the claim Recchi has presented to the fourth audience this week after she and Moines were accused of a possible hard launch based on photos that emerged from the Oceana Sea Change summer party with Nautica. More to come on that in Parasocial Plays. The Bachelorette Season 19 co-survivor and the Bachelorette Season 16 penis sculptor have led the fourth audience to believe there was more between them than platonic bliss in recent months with various social media posts and appearances. But alas, Recky appeared on the Almost Famous podcast after the weekend where she admitted, I feel like we always address the rumor over and over again. We're still not a couple. We're friends. She explained that the only male player to crash a season and walk away with a ring is her Ooh. most solid guy friend who she goes to for everything. And she didn't want to ruin that by turning things more romantic. Mm. Despite Rekia's insistence that Moines would be forever friend zoned, we only have to look 
to Aya Kennedy herself to see just how friendly a friend zone can be if given enough, enough time and persistence. I would love this because I ship them mm-hmm. and also because I'm thinking about how Blake Moynes would have dated the most bachelorettes ever. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I agree. I think that in itself is kind of a, um, it's a statistical kind of feather in the cap for sure. I don't know who, who has it so far. Two? Is it him still? He's dated three. I think it is him already. Right? Tasha, Claire, Katie. Yeah. While they were sitting. He dated three sitting bachelorettes in a row, basically. I don't know that we'll see something like that again. And finally, in Bachelor Nation news, the man whose exit from BIP Season 8 sent every player into a simultaneous nervous breakdown, Rodney Matthews, proposed to his civilian girlfriend, Ari Blige, this week. The one true underdog and his new fiance shared the news on Instagram with a series of photos from their engagement photo shoot in Riverside, California. Alongside the photos, Rodney wrote an afterlife commitment to Blige. Are you sure her last name is Blige? Yeah. Saying, in this life and the next, I will always choose you. Heart emoji, all caps, we're getting married. In the pics, Rodney is seen getting down on one knee as the two are surrounded by pink, purple, and white flowers. The photos also included a homemade newspaper that revealed the two met last June at the Venice Whaler, where Rodney gathered the courage to walk up to the most beautiful girl he'd ever seen. Have you been to that bar? Okay. Is it a new bar? Did it used to be called The Hideaway? No. I've been to that. There was a period of time where one of my friends lived out in Venice. We were at that bar every weekend for probably a year. Um, anyways. The Whaler. Gore I mean, girl. never say never, <laughs> as <laughs> Grupo says. Yeah. The Whaler Santa Monica. It sounds familiar. Nice bar. Gore Girl Jason Tardick wrote, Let's go! Congrats, my man. So happy for your groceries. Maybelline Queen Serena Pitt chimed in saying, Congrats, these photos are beautiful. And Gore Girl Susie Evans added, Absolutely adore you two. Double heart emoji. Congrats to Matthews and Blige on this next step of their journey. And that wraps up all of our... Yes, it's right by the water. Yeah. Are you sure this did not used to be called The Hideaway? I'm not positive. It was a gay bar. It was called The Whaler... I mean, Jesus... How old am I now? When would I have frequented oh. this? 15 years ago? Oh, then never mind. It's been there for at least that long. Um, it's in the same... It's in the same... Uh, in the same little building places. thing. Yeah, same, same little complex. area off Chautauqua. Yeah. Sorry. No problem. That wraps up all of our Bachelor Nation news. Now let's move on to that portion of our program where we talk about all the plays our favorite players are making off the field in their telephones, in those parasocial worlds. This is... The parasocial play, 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 play of the week. Our fifth place parasocial play. There were a lot of good plays this week. Uh, you know, all these babies, etc. Fifth place soft launch. No, Rachel, Rachel Reckia and season 17 ring winner Blake Moynes attended the Nautica event this week, prompting the fourth audience rumor mill to go into overdrive. Moines and Nautica's joint Instagram caption reads, making waves, hint, hint, that part's not in there, and memories at the Oceana Sea Change Summer Party with Nautica. Wave emoji. I can't see what that emoji is. Love me my Nautica, so I'm very happy to represent at Nautica and their ongoing support of at Oceana. Oceana is dedicated to protecting and restoring the world's oceans on a global scale and is the largest international advocacy organization focused solely on ocean conservation. Oceana seeks to make our oceans more biodiverse and abundant by winning policy victories in the countries that govern much of the world's marine life. 19 million plus donated through this annual event since 2008. Cheers to many more. Uh, Champagne glass cheers emoji. While the parasocial stats are hidden, some of the comments include some heavy hitters. Jen Tran wrote, it's giving three wave emojis. Mm. Pilot Rachel wrote four white heart emojis on this Hmm. but okay so not a red heart so i can see how she is friend zoning here 
you think white heart is platonic yes white heart is friend zone love <sighs> for now yeah it's platonic love of just let us dream clues I, believe me i'm living that same dream with you uh in our number four spot here today, sometimes the underdog comes out on top. The apple totting original underdog at the center of the VIP season eight group cry, Rodney Matthews, announces ring winner status via joint eight slide IG posts with images of him and Ari Blige. The caption reads, in this life and the next, I'll always choose you. We already uh, said we already this. this. We're getting members. But I do like that in this life and but the next. But we got the numbers. It implies he has In this life and the next. Knowledge. Like um past lives. lives yeah um we see i would that like got, to hear more on that i agree i might have to hit him up and see what his astral projection some his routines are um 81.8k likes <laughs> 2.2k comments congratulations to the underdog our third top pair of social play this week Joey Gazeman Grazzi and his ring winner paramour kelsey anderson made an incredible joint spawn con this week partnering with Ring Pop via Instagram Reel. In the video, the pair pose for romantic photos together and hold hands walking with Ring Pops. Via very 4TRR voiceover, Anderson explains that she couldn't wear her real sparkler during the watchback period, so she would use wrappers to cosplay as sparklers. She's grateful to incorporate Ring Pop into their engagement photo shoot for this reason, saying, quote, I don't really need much. I just need you. I love you, Joey. It's really brilliant when here, you can turn here's my question into something good like this, in my opinion. I agree. And SpawnCon can be some of my favorite parasocial plays because people put so much effort sure. into it sometimes. However, didn't we already see the engagement photo shoot? Wasn't it with the butterfly or the ring of light? Wasn't that the engagement photo shoot? Yeah, I think so. I guess you can have Get multiple. your money. Have 10 engagement photo shoots. Get I your mean, money. Shit. Mari Pepin and uh, Kenny Brash had three weddings, let alone They're multiple. still getting married. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They've still got 10 more weddings planned this year. Uh, for, and they're going to have that. an engagement I'm photo shoot for everyone. I'm going to try to do that for my own wedding, although oh, nice. I'm the only one on board with that. Multi-wedding. In our second place parasocial play of the week, we have... Uh, a play that has under the Chiron, everyone clearly seeing the final rose, Jesse Palmer stating the obvious, Jonathan Johnson lip sync Dr. Evil saying, the best part is nobody can stop me. Yes. Poking fun at Dark Lord Jesse Palmer reciting, this is the final rose each time. The caption reads, quote, I love at Jesse Palmer so much. Uh, crying tears emoji and red heart emoji, romantic love. Hashtag the bachelor, mm -hmm. hashtag the bachelor. Hashtag Spoiler. Bachelor Nation. <laughs> 399k yeah that's the big twist of the season is that jesse and jonathan johnson fall in love <laughs> shit 399k views 6.9k likes we hope jonathan will roast his tam sig next time the tam sig of course is the take a moment say your goodbyes 399k might not that's seem huge. a lot compared to our next play oh. but uh jonathan only has 21k on instagram so yeah, this is a great. huge huge engagement for him yep congrats all of these were strong plays however there can be only one winner our parasocial play of the week goes to madison pruitt obviously while many members of the nation announced their babies this week, only one did it with the business acumen and Christian aplomb we have come to expect from her. First, six days prior to this announcement, she launched her new merch line, Stay True slash Stand Firm in the Faith, with the description, Stay True, based in Waco, Texas. Maddie Pruitt Trout is the host of the podcast Stay True, as well as the author of Christian books, including Made for This Moment and The Love Everybody Wants. This collaboration with Proco features items intentionally designed to remind you to stay true and be courageous in this world. We believe Proco stands for the Proclamation Coalition. On their website, a portion of every purchase goes to missions for Proco. Peru's collab continues to read on its website, intentionally designed. Every design is created with the conversations in mind and always inspired by the word of God, W and G in caps. 
In this 10-slide Instagram pregnancy announcement, True Prue and Grant Trizzy Trout pose in Worth the Weight White and pose with a sonogram photo whilst frolicking in a field. 634.7K likes. Prue's follow-up reel in which she and Trout announced the pregnancy on her podcast, 2.8 million views. This was so dang wild. Um, I also read an article that said she waited 10 days to tell Trizzy that she was pregnant. Stop. Yeah. And I'm like, why did she tell this company though? Was this, it seems like this is all orchestrated. Oh, the rollout is orchestrated. Right. So the public like, rollout. I think she might've told a publicist or some kind of business partner that she was pregnant before she told Trizzy. I think that's no. possible. Yes. I think no, it's cause she looks very pregnant. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think they delayed the public rollout until they had the merch out. The business in place, yeah. Smart. Um, they also announced that they're going to do a gender reveal. Yeah, that's coming. Um, I love that they parsed that out. Ben Higgins put it all in one mm -hmm. post. What are you doing? Yeah. And she's um, posting every day these like pregnancy content now. I'm so tired. Oh, yeah. What it's like to be a mom. Trying I meant to, get to anything add this. Done, you know, all of that. Like, it's just a title. She then posted now. this reel where it's just her, like, sleeping on the kitchen table. Yeah. It's like, what it's like to be pregnant and try to do anything. 3.1 million views on that one. This The is, mom content is yeah. already. Pregnant. Pruitt. Skyrocketing. Is going to be a new era of Pruitt dominance. This is my prediction for the Pruitt Trout yeah. family. This child will be born. She will do some mommy content for a year or two. Then they're opening that mega church. And I wouldn't be surprised if somehow their She's child. She's definitely going to be doing the mommy content. I mean, she already kind of is. money maker, baby. Are, are, how is she going to give birth? On Amazon Live, though? I'm not sure. I mean, it's going to have to be tastefully done. I don't think you're going to see a ring light in the delivery room, a la Crystal Nielsen and Glitter Baby. I okay. don't think it's going to be like that. I think this will be, I mean, a hidden she's ring light. a billionaire. She can have the highest level of television production in that room with her to turn in a, basically like a 30 minute documentary on the experience if she wants to. That would be HBO worthy. I think we're going to see something like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're definitely going to see like a YouTube vlog. Yeah. We gotta. I agree. We deserve it. But congrats to the Trouts um, and the, the Pruitt This trouts, isn't the last the on it. It has to do with my scream. Oh, well, we'll, so, hear, we'll hear about that. Stay tuned. In just a minute. <laughs> we also have a creature to give an award to. People aren't the only ones making these parasocial plays. We got some creatures out there mm -hmm. in our beloved game. This week's parasocial creature of the week goes to Diesel, not Vin, but instead the incoming bachelor Grant Ellis's hound. This week, Grant posted an Instagram reel of himself dancing with his canine counterpart as he tries on different outfits. Diesel was elegant, regal, and cute as hell, and we can't wait to see what Diesel can do with Grant's status in the nation as he continues to elevate himself over the course of the next few months. Um, I am hopeful. The first I've heard of Diesel. I know. What is going on? I'm hopeful that Diesel makes an appearance. The Instagram in scrub went too far. Season 29. I think Diesel may be. Ooh, in I the think game. they have to allow them to have their pets. Yeah. I think if so too. If Boy can do it. I think so too. If they can build a swing set Rachel for Jason Leslie's Copper. kid. Copper was in the document. Oh, yeah. You're right. I. I think it's always a good idea. Just like they photoshopped all those dogs into Clayton's poster. Yeah. <laughs> the pets are always <laughs> always a good idea. They make you like oh the person God. so much. Yeah, it humanizes them. <laughs> um, at any rate, let's An move underdog. on <laughs> to our final portion of this program in which Pace Case and I descend deep into the bottom of the pit to issue forth our screams about how our fandom of this franchise and reality TV generally has drastically changed the very fabric of who we are as entities. This is... Screams from the Pit! So I told Clues that this scream happened during our break where we ate lunch today in writing this episode. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> and I thought it was going to be about the watch party mm. and how mad I was at the DNC, but it's not. Um, so I regularly donate to abortion funds. Uh, we still have, I'm Madison Pruding, we still have our abortion tote for sale. Mm. 
gameofroses.co, for which we are donating 50% of all sales to the National Network of Abortion Funds. NNAF works with more than 80 local abortion funds across the country and distributes money according to the level of threat of, to abortion access in that area. Every dollar donated to NNAF goes straight to a local fund. However, I made a donation as soon as we started writing this twibbon to a different fund. I purchased an item from the True Prue collection. Oh my God. A <laughs> royal blue <laughs> sweatshirt. <laughs> and um, it. Uh, <laughs> In my it. mind, I was like, Holy this is for clues. This is a present I'm going to give him. Oh, and I'm meant I realized, to wear it. Well, I realized I'm not going to see you for months. Yeah. Maybe it's a present for me yeah. instead. Or maybe you can have it after I wear it around um, okay. for a couple months. Sure. But it just, I I don't know. It just like made me laugh so hard. The, like, the truth is like, it says something like that. Mm. Um, on the sweatshirts, little details, there's a verse. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples. If you remain faithful to my teachings and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Mm. So I'm thinking maybe if you wear this sweatshirt while you're like doing your astral projecting or something, you yeah. can also learn the truth, the truth and tell me. All right. Thank you. Um, so yeah, that's my scream. That's fantastic. More money to the... More money to the Pruitt Trout family. <laughs> The Pruitt Trout We've family. already contributed a thirty-nine ninety-nine, I believe it was, black rubberized toilet plunger as a wedding gift. This to was, it was on the more expensive. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> yeah, she ain't getting out of bed for less than one hundred and fifty bucks per item at this point. Okay, not that expensive. Oh, really? Uh, not that level scream. Yeah, all right, reasonably. Priced. Look, there's some good deals. No, I'll go on that website later. That's my. That's my. I am scared screen. if I wear it that people will talk to me. Oh, for sure. I used to wear a um, It also included some fun details. Maddie is 5'5 five five and wearing a size L. Grant is 6'1 and wearing a size XL. Oh. I got an XL. Okay, great. Um, I used to wear a t-shirt when I was in college to work out at the gym that just had a like a image kind of of the traditional looking Jesus head on it. And um, it was just like an old yeah. shirt that I would wear to the gym thinking nothing of it uh-huh and people okay. would it was one of my gym shirts you know you have a rotation of gym shirts that just fell in there somehow and people would always come up to me in the gym and be like hey bro i really like that shirt like they were down with it. okay i'm worried that's gonna happen when i wear this sweatshirt but it's a beautiful color yeah well you see what happens my scream this week involves one chad johnson <laughs> okay so this happened oh, no. at the watch party <laughs> Somebody told me that Chad Johnson, I, I should preface this by saying I am also now a little bit in the 90 Day Fiance pit. And on 90 Day Fiance this past season, there was a woman from England named Sophie who was engaged to this guy, Rob, that lived in L.A. And it all fell apart in a kind of disastrous fashion. And I was told at the watch party that Sophie is now dating Chad Johnson. And they have been seen in each other's social media. And there are rumors of this all over the internet that I went down a, a huge rabbit hole uh, researching this. And all I could mm -hmm. think was... Are they confirmed? She claims they're not dating. But it's like, well, then why is he in okay, your social Rachel media Rick, all the time? Yeah. Exactly. That said, I still went down the, the rabbit hole in my mind of if they are dating, there is a non-zero chance. There's a 90-day spinoff of them. And Chad Johnson is returning back to reality television in that capacity. And I started imagining no. what that show would be like. Because there's a guy on 90 Day I right now. I think it's possible there could be a 90 Day crossover. It is. I mean, it, it is potentially happening. I don't know if they would give him a show because he has certain allegations and charges against him. So I don't yeah. know if they would like bring that kind guy. Kind of a loose cannon type. Yes. I think he might be more of a liability than they're willing to... Uh, entertain to make a TV show, but nonetheless, but they can make the show themselves. That was my screen. Chad Johnson came and get a hundred percent of the profits. Yeah, with Instagram and TikTok. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but he came from the. I mean, some of these depths. like influencers, you're like, you're getting three million views on this. That's more than the Bachelorette. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I don't know if either of them are at that level, but I just found it very interesting. I love the cross pollination of all of our reality worlds because mm -hmm. once you're in like. 
I know that it's very insular in terms of once you go into The Bachelor, you are you can be in that dating pool until you find somebody out of it. Multiple people are dating people that weren't on their season or that were on a different paradise or they meet them at a podcast or whatever. But it extends. I think it's like it's important to remember it extends to all reality television. Once you're in any reality show, you invariably are going to be meeting people at this or at that. Um, I believe they met at a... 90 day thing i forget what i read they, they met at some reality function with the whaler <laughs> yeah they met at the whaler while they were watching rodney matthews propose at any rate those are our screams but we ain't the only ones screaming Mm-mm. if you want to submit your very own scream all you got to do is join us at patreon.com slash game of roses you will get access to our discord in that discord is a channel called screams from the pit all you have to do is record a one minute or shorter audio or video format scream and email it to us, or submit it, sorry, on that Discord, and we play the best ones here. Anya goes through them all and sends us these screams. Are you ready for this scream? The keeper of the nightmares. Let's hear this scream. This yes. one today comes to us from... Uh, oh, this is a great username. Sopranho. It's like Sopranos, but it's Sopranho, and Ho is H-E-A-U-X. Let's take a listen. Mm. Hey, pit dwellers, I'm here to deliver a scream from the deep depths of the pit. I work for a small news publication that primarily covers medical news. I'm on the editorial team as a social media manager, and although I'm not a journalist, I help pitch story ideas to the team. We have a series that features medical professionals in unconventional jobs, and when Jen was announced as the bachelorette, I suggested that we interview her for the series, since she's also a PA student. My manager, who leads the project, agreed that this would be a good idea and reached out to Jen. However, filming had just started, so we never heard back. A couple of months later, I discovered on the forums that Jen's season had wrapped up filming. I told my manager that it might be worth reaching out again now that the season had finished filming. And to my amazement, we heard back from a publicist and an interview was arranged. I asked my manager if I could sit in on the interview, and she generously offered not only to let me sit in, but also to help conduct it. I was thrilled and got to work preparing questions. It felt like my years of studying the game had led to this moment. On the day of the interview, I joined a Zoom room and was face to face, or screen to screen, with the standing crown herself. However, my manager started having technical issues and couldn't join the Zoom room. With only 15 minutes for the interview, I began it solo while my manager tried to resolve the issues. Due to these technical difficulties, I ended up conducting the entire interview on my own with Jen. It was truly a thrilling and surreal experience, one that I believe I manifested through my many years of dedication to the pit and our beloved game. As the saying goes, the pit provides. Praise be our beloved game. Wowie. Clues? Wowie. I have goosebumps. Yeah, that was fantastic. It's beautiful the to see. The perseverance of the pit. Not this scream and last week's scream, I'm like. The pit I st- out. You be your own hero. Yes, and don't stop there. Just getting the interview wasn't where the scream ended. The dark powers of the pit said, okay, Sopranho, you're going to get the interview (laughs) and your manager's not invited. Pit members only. The pit used its dark energies to lock your manager out of the interview, allowing you precious one-on-one date time with Jen Tran. This is absolutely staggering to me. Congratulations on interviewing her first, by the way. But also congratulations on wielding the dark energies of the pit to make it a a special moment for you and you alone. (laughs) That's my favorite part of this. I mean, (laughs) I can't believe, like, the twists. The (laughs) twists in this. You think she's not going to get the interview. She does get it. Now the manager's locked out. It's like, that's a a sitcom script right there. What I'm most impressed by Um, is that you got ABC to agree to this. All of Jen Tran's appearances have to be scheduled and agreed upon by the producers, ABC, et cetera, et cetera. Definitely while she's The Bachelor, but also up until a year and a half to two years after she comes off the show. So I don't know how you managed to do that or your manager might have, but congrats on that as well. 
Maybe we should put our podcast in the medical category. Ooh, there we go. Make it educational. You think that'll like do that. it? Yeah. <laughs> um, there is video from this interview attached to this. Oh, great. And it is, well, I'll just let clues. Yeah, there's an Instagram it. reel. And also the interview itself has a link on. Oh, the reel is what I was talking about. Medpagetoday.com. Pop medicine. The Bachelorette, Jen Tran, tells all on PA school and her career journey, a Q&A with the future physician assistant turned reality TV star. Check that out. I'm sure we'll have links to this stuff all over our um, social media as well. Yes. Yeah, and then we here's will an share this reel. reel wow. But she is basically giving her influencer promise, Jen Trans, um, saying that everyone is asking her, is she really going to stay in medicine? Now she's a reality TV star, etc. And she basically says, there's open doors. I'm going to go through them interesting yeah we'll see mm -hmm. how long she's a but she a is PA. gonna finish pa school sure get the piece of paper that is she and then she get some other that. pieces of paper that are called hundred dollar bills raining from the sky for the rest of your life that is what i see in gen trans future thank you everyone for joining us today that wraps up this week in bachelor nation oh i should also mention the official music video for for the right reasons is now on my youtube channel <gasps> which is chat i don't know I don't know what it is even. I think I think I changed it to Chad K Music. If you look that up on YouTube or just look up my name, Chad Colchin, my personal YouTube channel, which I have never put anything on, is now going to start having some AI music videos. So there's that one and there's an AI music video on there for a song I made called Human to Human. That is an EDM song. <laughs> Enjoy that. <laughs> hey, you're going to say Rachel, Rachel Recchia. <laughs> that video is um, on I was almost going to bring up your video earlier yeah. um, when we were talking about how many bachelorettes Moines has dated and how sad it made me mm -hmm. when they show Rachel Recchia and Gabby Wendy, when you show yeah. them both in the same frame mm -hmm. during this video. Cause essentially it's like a time-lapse between every single lead of the show ever. People I highly recommend watching it. It will make you laugh. It will make you cry. People were DMing me that, that it, it brought tears to their eyes. And made, I was like, what? It made me, it made me like very, I, I, it gave me emotions I was wow. not expecting. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I'll have to like, tell my I don't know, good it's friend legacy, Will Sasso it's that. Like, he believes it's not possible to achieve emotional reaction using AI tools to make art. Well, that's a different what? Now. Yeah. That's a wild statement. <laughs> <laughs> a wild I'm sure you've guy. already had emotional reactions to AI. You just don't know it. Yeah, pr that's probably actually true. Um. um Thank you no, for it's so us. cool. And it's like all of them putting on yeah. cowboy hats and like Trista takes two halves of a cowboy hat and puts it together. There's a couple special ones like that. Yeah, it's, there's some, some things that reference good. whatever their season was. But check it out if you have time and if you can find it. Again, I think you can search Chad Culture on YouTube or Chad K Music maybe. I, I forget what I changed it to. Chad will post it again in his, <laughs> in his yeah. stories. I'll just put it on my Instagram. <laughs> That's probably the easiest way to do it. But uh, thank yeah. you, everybody, for joining us today. We will be back on Tuesday with our recap of Monday night's Fantasy Suites. And we will be back on Wednesday with our recap of the Men Tell All. And there will be no Twibbon next oh, week. Right. Those are our two episodes. <laughs> and again, just to remind anybody and everybody who's thinking about coming out to one of those watch parties, I will be there on this coming Monday, Monday for Fantasy Suites. No one will be there for Tuesday's Men Tell All. And then the next Monday finale, I will not be there, but Anya will. And there is an official Game of Roses watch party. But Pace Case and I will be in our homes watching it live so that we can record our mm -hmm. In silence. Yeah. Uh, also, shout out to the pit dweller who gave clues, who flew from Salt Lake City, I believe, and gave clues a bedazzled How to Win the Bachelor book. It was yeah. one of the highlights of my night. It's behind my head. I'll bring it down. It's right here. It's beautiful. It's on my bookshelf. There, I'll give you a closer view of it there. It's bedazzled. I don't know if you it's can see it. It's not showing up on the Zoom, but maybe on your high definition camera. I don't know if you can see the bedazzling, but it is bedazzled. It's beautifully yeah. done. It's Try to show it to every angle of the light. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for this. <laughs> it is a, a treasured possession that I now have. One of the best relics it's of the gorgeous. pit to have ever existed. Thank yeah. you, everyone, for joining us. And we will see you next Tuesday. Praise be Dark Lord Palmer. Please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. 
Please get a friend to listen to us and then please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us and then please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us and then 